And I want to maybe give you an example of his ability to teach. And this was a personal example. The first year uh, after I became a monk in 1980, I spent the rage retreat with Achan Chah. And he had 70 monks staying in the monastery and uh, about 50 nuns and many, many lay people coming in huge numbers to see him. And one day I went on arms round and on the way back I was walking back with another monk who was again newly ordained. And on the way back this monk started to find fault with the other monks in the monastery. This monk wasn't doing what he liked and this monk didn't say what he wanted and this he was complaining. And I remember thinking I didn't want to hear complaints about other good monks. And so I walked off ahead but I kept on thinking he shouldn't complain about other good monks. Why is he complaining about other good monks? And I started complaining about him. <laughs> and as I was thinking, he shouldn't do that, he shouldn't think that, I walked into the monastery and I had my head down thinking and carrying on this conversation that had ended ten minutes ago. And then I heard someone say in clear English, good morning. And I looked up and Achan Chao was standing a meter away from me with a big radiant smile on his face. And it was the first time I'd ever heard him speak English. <laughs> it was the he could only speak two phrases of English. The first one was good morning and the other one was do you want a cup of tea? because he went to England twice and everyone was always asking him, do you want a cup of tea? And he said it's very easy to remember because it's like in the Pali chanting when the monks give the blessing, Upa kappa tea. <laughs> do you want a cup of tea? And so he always remembered that. And so this was his chance to practice his English on me said, good morning. <clears throat> and I remember putting my hands in Anjali and smiling and responding, good morning Achan Cha, good morning Lung po. we called him Venerable Father, good morning Lung po, Venerable Father. And he smiled and of course my mood changed. I'd completely forgotten what this monk had said. Went back, we had the meal that day, I did sitting and walking meditation at my hut and in the evening I decided to go and visit him because I had learned as a layman shiatsu, how to do press a massage and every now and then I would go to his hut and give him a foot massage and he found that that was useful. So this day I decided, Achan Chad said good morning to me, I'd go over and give him a foot massage. <laughs> I went to his hut and at that time there was about 10 or 15 monks sitting uh, talking on Dhamma to him and listening to him explain aspects of Dhamma and he was sitting on a chair like this, a, a, a bamboo chair and so I sat down in front of him on the floor and he had his legs down and I started massaging his feet and he was chatting to the monks and then they rang the bell It was time for evening chanting and the hall for the evening chanting was very close to his, his hut and he told all the monks to leave and go off to do evening chanting and he said, Tanyana you stay here. It was the first time I'd been alone with him. There were so many people usually around him and he uh, we didn't have any candles lit, it was dark but the moon was coming up and it was one of those beautiful nights when it was temperature was just right. There was no mosquitoes around 
and I was sitting with Ajahn Chah and he just sat meditation and I was massaging his feet and then the monks started chanting 70 monks and it, I felt it was like in the heaven realms there was listening monks chanting the praise of the Buddha Dhamma Sangha and here you are repaying the debt of gratitude you owe to the teacher that the Buddha said you should do and he was sitting there peacefully and it was my chance to make a lot of merit and just as I felt like my mind was in the heaven realms he kicked me in the chest <laughs> and I fell backwards and hit my head and then he pointed at me and said see one monk says something you don't like and then another monk says good morning and you're delighted all day <laughs> do not get lost in the words of others watch your own mind and then he gave me a Dhamma talk about not delighting in or getting lost in the words of others whether it's praise or blame whether we like it or don't as he would say if we like it that's good if we don't like it that's good if it's good that's good if it's bad that's good <laughs>